Hi there, this is an Algebra 1 video. It is Chapter 7, Sections 1 and 2. Today we're talking about multiplication and division properties of exponents. And before we begin, we want to uh, make sure that we have an understanding of what a monomial is. Mono meaning one. Um, and so a monomial is defined as a number, a variable, or the product of a number, and one or more variables with non-negative integer, integer exponents and it has only one term. So as an example, um, a monomial could be a number, so it could be something like just the number two could be considered a monomial. It could be a variable, like the variable x, um, or it could be the product of a number and a variable, so something like 3x could be a monomial. And also you could have something that has more than um, one variable, like 2x squared yz has three variables and a number and um, has some exponents. Um, all of the variables have to have um, integer coefficients um, that are not negative or zero. So it has to have, um, they can have fractional exponents. So something like uh, four X to the negative three would not be considered a monomial. Um, something like five X to the one half power would not be considered a monomial because it has the exponent has to be a non-negative integer. So it can't be negative, can't be zero, and can't be um, a fraction. So examples of things that are monomials are the ones that we have there. Um, and then for the second one is a constant. A constant is a type of monomial that is just a number. So of the examples I've given you, the only one that is a constant is the two because it has no variable. So that being said, we're gonna move on. And it says here, Determine whether each expression is a monomial. Write yes or no, explain your reasoning. So number or letter A would be yes, um, because it's a number. Um, B would be a yes, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this has, um, I'm sorry, it is a polynomial, but it's not a monomial. They want to know if it's a monomial. A monomial means it can only have one term. And terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So we have an addition symbol here. So this is actually two separate terms. Um, this is not a monomial. But um, so that would be why. It'd be no because it has two terms, not one. Um, C is h squared. That would be yes because it only it doesn't have any addition or subtraction. And it's h squared and 2 is a non-negative integer. And then D is J, and that's also a yes, because it's okay to have a variable by itself, as long as it doesn't have a fractional exponent or a negative exponent. So there you go, and now you can try to do it yourself, number one. We do have a lot of examples today, because we're doing two sections at the same time, but they are gonna go by very quickly. So we wanna start with one of the first um, multiplication properties of exponents, and then at the very end of the lesson, we'll do the um, division properties of exponents. So the first one is the power. Um, I wanted to give you guys a, def not a definition. I want to give you guys um, a little bit of a, a vocabulary on powers. Um, a power is basically referring to the three to the fourth power. This entire expression, oops, still have my eraser on. This entire expression here is what we consider the power. Sometimes we refer to the exponent as the power, but we're talking about um, the three to the fourth power, that's, that's what I'm considering a power. So in the power, you have a base, so the red part is the base, and the four is the exponent. So we know that three to the fourth power would be basically broken down into three times three times three times three, four times, and that would equal 81. So um, we have now a property of powers, the product of powers is when you have two powers multiplied by each other. And the two powers have the same base, which is why they both have the same A, and so the rule of thumb is that when you have the same base, you add the exponents. Now to explain that or to um, show you how that works, we can actually come over here and do it the long way. I'm not going to use the, the rule, but I'm going to show you how the rule works. So in other words, when you see 3 squared, that literally means 3 times 3. And when you see 3 to the fourth power, it means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well now, as you look at that expression, how many threes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's basically three to the sixth power, which is the same thing as if I had gone the shortcut way, 
which would be to use the rule and just add the 2 and the 4, that also would have been 3 to the 6th power. So it's a lot easier to use the rules in this case. So basically what I've shown you with this is the product of powers property that whenever you have the same base and you're multiplying powers that you add the exponents. So now we're going to use that and this example. And here we go. So um, first thing I want to do is kind of um, we know that when we multiply, when we, we sorry, when we multiply, we can put um, the order in different. We can put the numbers in different order. So what I want to do is kind of put all of my coefficients together, like the six and the two. So we're going to go six times two, and then we have the times n cubed times n to the seventh. So that basically means that six times two is just twelve. And here with the same base, they both have a base of n, our rule says to add the exponent, so 3 plus 7, which is 10. So my answer would be 12n to the 10th. In the second case, um, we don't have uh, two different numbers, but we do have two different variables. So we have p here, and we have p cubed over here. So we want p times p cubed. Then we have t cubed times t to the fourth. And so the 3 is going to stay there. And this is a p to the 1 power. So 1 plus 3 is going to be p to the 4th power. And then for the t's, we're going to add 3 and 4 and get 7. So we get 3, p to the 4th, t to the 7th. And so now if you will try do it yourself number 2, we will go on to the next um, property. The next property of multiplication is a power of a power. And that happens when you have a power that's then raised to another power. And according to the rule, what you do in this case is you multiply the exponents. But here to explain how that works, we have an example of 2 to the third power times 4, or to the fourth power. What this is telling you is that you have 2 to the third times 2 to the third times 2 to the third times 2 to the third. You have 2 to the third four times. But then each 2 to the third is 2 times 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 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 to the third powers. And now if we count up how many 2's there are, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 2 to the 12th power. If we had used the rule, we would have gone 2 to the 3 times 4 power because we multiply these guys and we would still get 2 to the 12th power. So again, a shortcut to um, that to use the, the rule instead of trying to work it all out this way. So now we're going to apply our rule as we do this um, example here. It says simplify 2 cubed squared to the 4th. Now in this case we have 2 cubed squared, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify the inside of my brackets first, which is to take and multiply the exponents. So that's going to be 2 to the 6th power because I'm going to multiply the 3 and the 2. But then I have another power to a power because there's still a 4 out there. So now I get to do 6 times 4, which is now 24. So at the end of the day, you get 2 to the 24th power as our um, answer for example 3. So now I'd like you to try to do yourself number 3. And then we will go on to our last um, product um, or sorry, multiplication property. And so here it is, power of a product. So in this case, this is really more like the distributed property. What's different about this one is that you don't you have two different bases in here. They're not both A's. You have an A and a B, so they're different bases, but they're both being raised to the same power of M. So what happens in that situation is that you distribute the M to both the A and the B, and you get A to the M times B to the M. And again, to show you how that works, we have an example of two different bases. That means 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. So basically, you have 2 times 3 three times. But again, when we multiply, it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. So that could very easily become 2 times 2 times 2. So I can get rid of those. And then 3 times 3 times 3, which is basically the same thing as 2 to the third times 3 to the third which is basically distributing the 3 to both the 2 and the 3. So that's how we do that. It says here in our example 4 
Now we're going to use this property to express the area of a circle as a monomial. So what we have here is, is, I don't know if you can see very clearly, but we have the radius of this circle labeled as 2xy squared, and we know the area of the circle is pi r squared. So we're going to go pi r squared, but what's going to happen is that instead of uh, having an r here, we're going to replace the r with what the radius says here in the um, diagram, which is 2x y squared. So what's happening here is that you have three different bases inside these parentheses that all are being raised to the power of 2. So we need to distribute. Our pi is still going to stay there. We're going to get times 2 squared because we have to distribute the 2 to the 2 here. Also to the x, so x squared, and also y squared squared. Now we get to simplify this and we know that 2 squared is 4. So we're going to put 4 pi, the x squared is going to be there, and here we're going to use the power from before, which was when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply those. So 2 times 2 is 4. So now we have expressed the area as a monomial, and it will be 4 pi x squared y to the 4th power. And so now we're going to have you try these do-it-yourself questions. And then we're going to be asked to put all of what we just figured out to use in simplifying this last problem here. So um, what we see first and foremost is the, um, the two out here needs to get distributed to everything inside. So that's going to be three squared, x squared, y to the fourth squared. And then here we have negative 2y, which is this piece here, and then it's a power raised to a power. So 2 times 3 will give us a 6. And then we're going to do, um, sorry, 3 squared, which is 9, x squared, and here we have a power raised to a power, so that's going to be y to the 4 times 2, which is 8. And here you need to um, put negative 2 to the 6th and y to the 6th. Now negative 2 to the 6th power is going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Um, negative 8 times 2 is going to be positive 16. 16 times um, negative 2 is going to be negative 32. And then finally negative 32 times negative 2 is positive 64. So now we have 9x squared, y to the 8th times 64y to the 6. And we can put our 64 and our 9 together. So 64 times 9 is going to give us 576. Then we have our x squared. And because they're both the same variable, we can add the 8 and the 6, which is going to give us 14. So here is our final answer, 576x squared y to the 14th power. So now if you can do this, do it yourself, number 5, we will move on to the division properties of exponents, and that's basically 7.2. And in 7.2, we have um, four examples to do. And we have, like the, pro the product of powers, now we're talking about the division properties, uh, which is, of course, the word quotient. So our rule of thumb for quotient of powers is when you have the same base and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. When we're multiplying, you add the exponents. When you're subtracting, sorry, when you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. And to give you an example of how that works, we have 3 to the fifth powers, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, times three five times. On the bottom, you get 3 times 3 because it's 3 squared. And so what's going to happen is that this 3 and that 3 are going to cancel. This 3 and that 3 are going to cancel. And you're going to end up with 3 to the third power, which is the same thing as saying 3 to the 5 minus 2 power. 5 minus subtraction will be 3 to the third power. So there you go. So now we're going to use that to um, work out this example here. 
It says to simplify um, g cubed h to the fifth over g h squared. So what we're going to do is going to say g to the 3 minus 1. Well, there's no exponent written. We assume it's a 1. So we're going to subtract the exponents there. And then h is going to be 5 minus 2. There's a 5 on top and a 2 on the bottom. So that's going to become 3 minus 1 is 2. So we're going to get g squared. And then 5 minus 2 is 3. So g squared h cubed. And that is our solution for example 6. Now you can try these in a very similar fashion. And then we go on to the power of a quotient. The power of a quotient is much like the um, power of a product. It's pretty much um, distribution property. So you're dividing two different bases. So A and B are not the same. But they're inside the parentheses and then raised to the n power. So basically that means that you can distribute the m, the exponent, to both A and B, which is what we see here. Um, as our example over here, we're going to say this would be 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds times 2 thirds. But we know that when you multiply um, fractions, you can just multiply across. So really what we have is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is really 2 to the fifth power over 3 to the fifth power, which is basically distributing the 5 to both the 2 and the 3. So you can see how that works. So now we simplify example 7 in much the same way as we did before. So the 2 basically needs to go to everything inside here. So it needs to go to the 3. It needs to go to the p cubed. And it needs to go to the 7. So 3 squared is 9. Um, in the case of the p cubed, you multiply the x1 as a power raised to a power. So that's going to be p to the 6. And then 7 squared is 49. Um, if there was anything in common between 9 and 49, then you could try to reduce that fraction. But right now, there's nothing in common, so our final answer is right here. And now you can try do it yourself number 7, and then we will go on to our zero exponent property. And our negative exponent property are going to be our last examples here. The zero exponent property basically states that anything raised to the zero power is equal to one, and I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna use our quotient property to prove this. So what's happening here is, I want you to just for a moment think back on how, what would have to happen for you to have a zero power. We know that when you're dividing, you subtract exponents, and if you subtract the same number from each other, three minus three will give you zero. That's what we're gonna, what we're gonna go with here. So we know that in this case, you get two times two times two on the top, on the bottom, you get 2 times 2 times 2. And this 2 and that 2 will cancel because 2 divided by 2 is 1. This 2 divided by that 2 is 1. And this 2 divided by that 2 is 1. So in the end, you get 1. But more importantly, if you had actually used the quotient property, you would be subtracting these exponents. And you would have 2 to the 3 minus 3, which is the same thing as 2 to the 0. And so basically, we see that 2 to the 0 power is 1. And that's basically what happens in any case when you have a zero exponent. It means that the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction are the same. And when you subtract the exponents, you get zero as the exponent. And anything divided by itself is one. So therefore, the zero exponent property exists. And we have a to the zero power equals one. So in example um, eight, part A, it's, it, looks really, it looks really difficult. It's, you know, it's very large. It's got all this stuff going on. But this is all raised to the zero power. So we do, not have to, we do not have to distribute the zero. We can just say anything raised to the zero power is one, and we're done with part A, just like that. Now in part B, we can't do that because we don't have everything to the zero power. We still have to deal with these x's. So as far as the x's are concerned, you have to subtract the exponents because you're, because you're dividing. So it's uh, 5 minus 3, and then y to the zero. Well, 5 minus 3 is 2, so we get x squared y to the 0. But since we know y to the 0 is 1, it goes away, and our final answer is just x squared. So for part B, example 8, we get x squared. And now you can try these examples on your own. And then we're going to go to our last um, example here, example 9. 
and then this is the negative exponent property. And like before, the, we're going to use the um, division uh, quotient property to show you how this works. In this case, you're talking about what happens when you have a negative exponent. How do you even get a negative exponent? According to this property, if you have a negative exponent, you can reciprocate it and make it a positive exponent. So in this case, the negative is here, so we put it on the bottom, and it becomes a positive end. In the case of it already being on the bottom and negative, then you would put it on the top, and it would become positive. So we have an example here. How do we get negatives? We get negatives when we subtract a larger number from a smaller number. So here I'm going to show you that 3 squared is basically... 3 times 3, 3 to the fifth is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And like before, the 3 and the 3 cancel because 3 right here is 1. This pair of 3's cancels, but they don't all cancel. You still have some 3's on the bottom, which basically means you have 1 over 3 cubed. Well, if you use the property of division, of the quotient property, well, according to that, you subtract the exponents, but the top is smaller than the bottom. So you would go 2 minus 5, and that would produce 3 to the negative 3 power. So you can see that 3 to the negative 3 power is the same as 1 over 3 to the positive 3rd power. And that's how you can demonstrate the negative exponent property. But basically, if you have a negative exponent, you need to move it. If it's negative on top, move it to the bottom. If it's negative on the bottom, move it to the top. All right? So we are going to do this last um, example here. And we can see that right away. I'm just going to draw my fraction bar. The n it has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move that to the bottom and make it a positive exponent. The r is on the bottom, and it's negative, so I'm going to move that to the top with a positive 2. And the p wasn't negative in the first place, so it's just going to stay where it was. So we have p to the fourth, r squared, n to the fifth. And we don't have any um, like uh, variables to combine anything. So then we're going to move to part B. And in part B, you can see that just because it's a fraction doesn't mean that you can't reduce um, the coefficients. So we know that 5 goes into 5 once, and that 5 goes into 24 times. So that we can reduce right away. Um, the other thing that we have to do is look at the uh, variables. So we have R's on top and on the bottom. So one thing that you can do. I'm going to leave my negative 4 on the bottom. There's a positive 1 on top. But this r, the negative 3, has to go to the bottom because it's negative. So it's going to be r cubed. Um, the t to the 4th can stay on top because it's positive. The t to the 7th can stay on the bottom because it's positive. But there's also an r squared there, so I'm going to put the r squared there. There's a t to the 7th down there. And then we have this v to the negative 5th, and it's going to go on the top as a positive 5. And then we want to combine any like terms that we can. So um, we still have this little guy. We have our v to the fifth. And t, I'm going to go 4 minus 7, because I'm dividing here with the t to the fourth and t to the seventh. 4 minus 7 is going to be negative 3. And then on the bottom, you have your negative 4. And then r cubed, r squared, we're going to add 3 and 2 and get r to the fifth. And so now, the only problem left is that we can't have the t to the negative 3 on top. We're not supposed to have any answers with negative exponents in them. So my final answer is going to be v to the fifth, negative 4 on the bottom, uh, r to the fifth, t to the third. So I'm going to put the t on the bottom again, but this time with a positive exponent. So there will be my answer for, and that, that's supposed to be a negative there, so hope you can see that negative um, for part B. In C, we do uh, much the same thing. We're going to have 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 10 five times, so we're definitely going to have a 5 on the bottom still. We have a squared up here, but we also have a to the negative 3 down here. So there's two ways that you can do this. I didn't do this in the last one, but we can do it on this one show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. I'm not going to put my exponent yet because I'm going, I am dividing here, so supposedly I'm supposed to be able to subtract. But you have to be careful when you're subtracting negatives because two negatives make positive. 
So I'm going to say 2 minus negative 3 is actually 2 plus 3, and you get a to the fifth. And then here I'm going to go b, and it's going to be 3 minus negative 1, but 3 minus a negative is 3 plus 1, and that's b to the fourth. And then finally we have negative 5 minus negative 4, which is negative 5 plus 4, which is c to the negative 1. So at the end, the only number that still, the only variable that still has a negative exponent is c. So c needs to go to the bottom with the 5, and then it'll be to the positive 1 power. And then a to the 5th and b to the 4th can stay chilling on top. And there would be your um, final answer for c. So, just want to double check that we have all the correct answers here. P to the 4th, R squared, N to the 5th. We have our V to the 5th over 4, R to the 5th, T cubed, which was negative. And then A to the 5th, B to the 4th, divided by 5C. So now you can try this. And as soon as you have finished this example, you will have completed your notes for this lesson. And I will see you in class. And thank you for watching.